Hi, I'm Nixie Pixel, founder of Geek Beacon. And I'm Mark Watson, also known as Soldier Knows Best. Malik from New Meta Group. I'm Dom Esposito from YouTube. And I'm Dr. Anthony Bean from Geek Therapeutics. And thanks, guys, for tuning in for this year's Geek Beacon Festival in support of the Able Gamers Charity. Geek Beacon's mission is to create opportunities for techies and gamers and people with disabilities and neurodiversities. We combat social isolation with our inclusive communities through the power of tech and open source. And we invite amazing guests to have empowering chats like the one you're about to watch. And welcome to our creator panel um, for mental health. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Thanks for having Yay. me. Hey, no Thank problem. you. All right. Um, but I kind of yeah. wanted to talk about like the history of content creation. And um, if you wanted to, um, Tony, if you wanted to explain your role, because I think one of the things is you have three 15 year plus content creators. Is that worth saying? <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> and wow. then um, and then you basically deal with a lot of uh, creators and the pressure that's put on creators. So I, I thought it would be really cool to invite you in to kind of have that lens on it. Now I'm going to ask you, since you're in the spotlight, <laughs> Mark, can you tell us a little bit about your journey through content creation? Cause you know, you've been doing this for a little bit. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I started doing goofy YouTube videos in college and then uh, I got commissioned in the army once I got graduated and I did my first video tech video focus on like the first iPhone. And uh, but yeah, I was doing it at that time just to kind of give advice and it turned into a hobby and then um, kind of turned into a job a few years later, a full time job. And uh, yes, yeah, so I just kind of I came from the place of just starting it for fun, you know, and just to, with no ambitions, no like expectations. And then, uh, yeah, about 15 years later, I'm still hanging around. Still the old dog. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I did. This, I wonder if that's a trend with people that have been doing this for a while, because um, like to talk about my experience, I'll kick it over to me. Um, I started making uh, YouTube videos for fun. But I do want to say that back in the day, there was not even a monetization model. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, oh, it wasn't like, I'm going to, you know, make a career in YouTube videos. It's like, no, this piece of Japanese candy is cool. And I'm going to make a 15 second. So like po potentially I was one of the original Viners before Vine was a thing. Slash TikTok now. Could you say that Vine is like TikTok now? Anyway. Uh, yeah. So there was no model for money, um, but I got picked up by the Discovery Channel. And before that, I had done some internship on... Um, uh, tech TV and G4. And um, ironically enough, I kind of got drowned out by a lot of the people that came from Vine to YouTube. And I noticed that it came, it ev evolved into this just like short form video content, but we can talk about that later. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's what it's all about. What a I feel like you guys' journeys are a lot similar to mine. Uh, because I started off on YouTube as well. Uh, for me though, I think that my ultimate goal was never to be monetized. It was never really to be famous or anything like that. I just wanted to find another way into the video game industry. And I realized that doing reviews on YouTube, uh, it offered me an opportunity to have a platform and to you know start to build a following and even build a readership because I had a blog that kind of accompanied my YouTube and I would direct people from the YouTube page over to my blog to read like the game reviews. So uh, oh I didn't gosh. expect the YouTube to be so successful, but then it started like really to pick up. So then I really had to like focus on both. I was like trying to like write articles and do these YouTube videos and just kept doing that. And uh, throughout the years, uh, ended up getting brought in onto projects and, you know, wearing so many different hats throughout the video game industry. So it all started on YouTube though. And uh, yeah, I think yeah. there's, a, there's something about that. I think um, maybe many of us started there. <laughs> yeah. Malik, my situation is very, very uh, similar to yours where I had a blog and, you know, back in 2010 or so, uh, the only way like YouTube was the easiest way to embed your video, like a video that you made onto a blog. I didn't care about YouTube <laughs> at all. I didn't even know a community existed on YouTube at the time. <laughs> I was making videos, uploading them to YouTube so I could embed them on my blog because that was the only way oh, I could unless you were I hosted technically 
doing it for like the embed experience. Yeah. It was yeah. just like a tool. It, it was just a tool that <laughs> nice. I was using to to have my blog because it was way more expensive to host my own videos and it took way too much bandwidth from like oh, yeah. the the VPS that I was using and it was just not it wasn't logical so I was like well whatever and Vimeo you had to pay to embed at the time I don't I know if they this. what they do now but on YouTube it was free you just put a thing on there you can embed it no problem well I didn't realize that I was building an audience on YouTube while I was, I wasn't even looking at YouTube ever. I would just upload the video, go get the embed code and close YouTube and do the blog thing. Yeah. And then I started realizing that an audience was building on YouTube. And then I started realizing that it was way more important of an audience than I was building on my blog. And so eventually I just gave up on the blog thing and went straight to the YouTube. I never intended on being on camera or in front of people's faces every day like i that was <laughs> i never wanted that if i honestly if i could go back and i knew that where it was going to be now i wouldn't have chose that path i just didn't expect you know what i mean it just kind of yeah. happened and and i i never was really one that wanted to be like face to face like all my videos at the time when i first started they were all screen capture stuff or like just my hands right. um because i never That's intended to have my face anywhere Really, I, and not that I wanted privacy. I just, I'm just not. I was never an on camera, in front of people, right, right. kind of entertainer, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. and it just kind of happened. <laughs> the the thing that I'm noticing. Oop, hey everybody. <laughs> the thing that I'm noticing is, um, there's a trend of everything. Back then, it was just an ev evolutionary process where your audience ended up becoming. Like people came to you and then you ended up fostering a sense of community that way. And they had video responses back then. Do you guys yeah. remember that? Oh, yeah. We make oh, a yeah. video response. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think Dr. those things were just on their way out when I was like, yeah. I remember I finally got partner and I got channel branding and literally like six months later, eight months later, they took it all. All the channel branding stuff went away. Like I was so happy because oh, I, yeah. I just started fostering YouTube and I was like, oh, we got partner and like I can do like custom HTML in my channel and blah, blah, blah. And then like they changed it to the new new format, like not too long after that. I can't remember how long, but I was so disappointed because I was like <laughs> looking forward to that so much. And it do you guys away. remember that part, part where they offered Twitch partnership with the click of a button? Oh, yeah. At there the was, very beginning. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Especially I, if the, you had like a YouTube following. They were Yeah, it was just quick. like. Yeah, I be I remember baking cupcakes for like my first 1000 subscribers and I was like, well, I've topped out. There's literally no way that it gets better than this. And <laughs> um and then they there was like just one click to get Twitch partnership and um I didn't I was like, eh, I'll get around to it at some point and now it's like you need to have so many accolades. But yeah. uh I would be remiss if I didn't uh throw it over to Dr. Dr. Tony, Dr. Anthony. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what is it like? What type of um, people do you see? Oops, where do you go? Here you are. I, I'm everywhere <laughs> and nowhere at the same time. That's the problem. <laughs> so what is it like for the gamers that you interface with? Are they a lot of creators? Are they like hustling? Do they feel pressure? What about yes. you? What's going on? So so we, we launched uh, our YouTube and our uh twitch probably about a year and a half ago uh twitch slowly takes off for for us because we don't do anything really fun on there but our youtube stuff is, has been taken off a lot a lot easier um i counsel and do therapy with a lot of video gamers uh producers honestly and voice actors is really what my practice is is highly made up of right now um and the the number one thing that always comes up is how do I handle this? How do I send this thing out, this tweet, this idea to brand myself? And what is my backlash? Because we know there's a lot of backlash for a lot of stuff that we want to do. And it's the idea always is, how is this going to affect me if I don't, if this is not received very well? And so we always have to from, go over by the audience or by, by the by the audience. So so a uh, lot of the the creators that we we work with are are really beholden. And uh, when we talk about like parasocial relationships and how they they impact us, like all of us here as as some sort of creators, we are creating a parasocial relationship with the people who are watching us. They feel connection to us. They feel like we matter to them. We give them. What's some a parasocial sort of, guess, relationship, Doc? It, 
Uh, it's a it's a it's a one way relationship where if someone watches oh, us on YouTube, they see us and they're like, "I feel this connection to you on um, this person," and we have no clue who they are. Uh, but we oh, reach yeah, tons absolutely. and thousands of thousands of people um, every. It's the first step year. of stalking. It is one of the yeah. first steps. Yeah. Um, and of that gateway. You, but the gateway. <laughs> yeah. But, well, because you feel like you know the person, and then you, mm -hmm. and then you, you feel like you're in a relationship with that person, and yes. yeah. and 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 like quite literally, especially for a lot of people that genuinely show their actual feelings and like um, let you into more. Like some of us are just like surface level. Like I like this kind of technology, blah blah blah. But like some people, like family vlogs and like things like that, that are way more in depth, and you feel like you're involved in their life can that can be problematic i feel like yeah definitely like from a, you're making direct eye contact to the camera as well i've noticed that um that parasocial is that am i saying that right parasocial yeah, yeah, I, parasocial. I that was really interesting when you said that because i i never really thought about that i think that a lot of people you kind of feel more connected to you um just on the basis that you're staring into their soul and talking to yeah. them in a reliable way have you all um, had experience with that or? Um... Yeah, yeah I, I would say I, like if I do meet people out that they recognize me, um, I, I kind of flip it. Like I spend more time asking them questions about, hey, where are you from? What do you do? And I, I'm like trying to get to know them because they, they know generally, you know, they're going to know way more about me, of course, than, than I know about them. So um, <laughs> some of them are kind of like <laughs> they're like surprised by that. But. I'm very inquisitive to, to learn, oh, yeah. you know, the viewers and stuff. And when I meet them and I'll sit there, if I have time to talk with them for a few minutes. And I think that's, it, it just, I don't know. It makes me, it, it just switches the roles and it makes me feel more, more connected to the audience. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the way to go about it too, because you also got to take into consideration that this person probably knows a lot about you and <laughs> may have done some research. So it'd be nice for you to know a little bit about them too, you know? Oh Maybe yeah. Find out you know, if you were hanging out in Washington, D.C. on January 6, 2021, I'd like to know that, you know, I'd like to know everything about you. So I'll ask you all the questions. And I think that also just kind of creates a, more of a connection, you know, with uh, folks who are dedicated to your community and helps build a stronger community at the end of the day. I think on uh, to play devil's advocate on this side of things, it also in a lot of ways empowers people to feel like they can tell you whatever they want and that's okay because they feel like that connection with you like they can speak to you however they like to they can disrespect you they can treat you like you're somebody that's actually in their world not to say that that's how they treat all the people but you know right. what i mean like it 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 also i feel like it makes people a lot more comfortable behind a keyboard um to be able to like you know like not think that they're actually communicating with like or somebody that like that like that they're they're not communicating with somebody that's that has no no feelings or no emotions towards things or whatever. I, I think people get really comfortable in that way. I guess. But the, the the key you know a key prime example of this actually is the supernatural cast. The cast of super supernatural has, is is their their cons and everything like that are notorious for for having a lot of this uh, parasocial relationship stuff happen because they go they're to their seasons. If you haven't watched the the series, it is laden with uh, psychological material. Like it is intense, and they're they speak very openly about their own mental health issues in being creators, being actors, but also playing as these these things and how they can interweave it into the the storylines as well. And they've always talked about how when they go to cons, people will just unload on them like you touched me on this season seven episode two at the 16 minute and 26 seconds mark <laughs> this is what i felt like and they're like we have no clue what that is i always you think that's that gotta autograph? be weird do you know yeah. like that's gotta be weird because like the equivalent of that is being like hey mark do you remember what you said in your last review at the two minute and 30 second mark and you're like wait what you know what i, I mean I, like I, I told like, them to like and subscribe yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like it's just weird like that because yeah, like you, you, I mean, you feel like very personal relationships with people, actors you watch playing a character on a show, but like to them, they went to work and then they went home. You know? Yeah. Um, I think it, it's interesting when, to your point, it kind of, it reminds me more of 
one step beyond humanizing. It's almost like you're deifying that person, that that person could do no law, uh, no wrong. I remember actually there was a time where I took a long break for medical reasons and there was actually a subreddit that was created and on my behalf with all of these things like they went in and they were like, you know, the, the community or the group was like, okay, she's playing violent video games and there's no way that she would ever do that. Therefore, she must be, you know, dead or someone hacked her account. And it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I, I just wanted to share that one instance because that's just kind of, that was just kind of intense for me. Um, but I also wanted to kind of dive into your point more, uh, Dom, about uh, keyboard warriors, I guess you could say. And, um, how do you, you know, obviously not our audience, <laughs> right? Not our audience, <laughs> no, our audience. but I mean, other people's audiences. <laughs> most beautiful people on the planet. <laughs> Those uniques, man. Yeah. You don't see this how... somebody's holding a gun to my head off the side of the camera. <laughs> no. No, how, I, I... how do you protect yourself against somebody thinking that they could, um, control the way that your creative process works Here, here's because the I thing think for me that kind of is hardest for me with this whole topic of creator burnout i would say personally for me that 80 70 to 80 percent of the burnout is the audience that i'm burned out from i like making things and if i could make whatever the heck i wanted to and and just like you know like, I mean, obviously I can, but like, obviously there, are, there also does have to be an agenda because you're in a niche and like it, that kind of thing. If I could do just whatever, I would just make stuff all the time. And, and I do in other, in other mediums, like I don't just do this one thing and that's it. You know, I have other things that keep my creative juices flowing elsewhere. But I would say if, as far as being burned out goes, I get burned out more on the people than the craft. That's just, you know, because yeah. because of people thinking they can do and say whatever they want. And it there's a lot of like negative stigmas that are are created around just, you know, how the platform operates or algorithms or this right. and that. You know, I I get burned out from the people far more than anything else. In this, job. I want to toss yeah. this over to Malik for a little bit because I think he might have only a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless no, I... you can stretch, carve out some more time. But you've you've done so many different things, uh, from music to you know being a part of a network to Nerdist. Like, what what do you have to say about the creative process and and how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of I I think Dom has a point there that you know, the audience can really burn you out quite a bit. They can really drain you. Uh, but one thing for me that I have done over all these years to you know, continue to recreate myself and whatnot is just to really get in my mind that you know, content creation is one thing and being a content creator is one thing, but I consider myself an artist. I consider myself somebody who's creating something and is you know, uh, charting my own course, beating to my own drum. And, you know, the more I remind myself that I'm not just making content just to put it out there, that I'm creating something that, you know, I am nursing, you know, this thing and, and bringing it to fruition. Uh, it helps me to just keep moving forward and to keep really sticking to my guns and shooting for the stars because uh, so you, you can get in a monotonous pattern because staying consistent at the end of the day is so important in the game of content creation. And there are some days where you might be mentally taxed and just be like, I just need to get something out. And uh, when I have those moments, I just have to always remind myself that like, yo, you, the reason why you're doing this is because this is something that you're skilled at. You can create, you know, you uh, you can make something that's different that it, all you have to do is just be yourself. And um, the more I do that, the uh, the more consistent I'm able to be and the uh, the easier it is for me to navigate and just kind of mentally keep myself together and, to want to keep creating and to want and having fun with it, you know? Uh, so I, when I, when I get that in my mind, all those troubles and worries that I have with the audience kind of burning me out and just kind of frustrating me and kind of trying to dictate what my content is, it goes away because I'm just doing my own thing, you know? And, um, I, that that's been super important as I've continued over and over again to kind of recreate myself, you know, starting off on YouTube and then kind of going into the Twitch scene for some years and doing esports broadcasting and you know now I'm, I'm doing a lot of tiktok videos and 
you know, this has been a whole new, you know, medium to do this on. So, and it's the same thing. I'm just always constantly thinking what new, what, what can I add to the artistry of making TikTok videos about the topics that I'm talking about? And, uh, as long as I keep that mindset, I feel like you can, you can last forever if you consider your, your work and take your work that way, you know? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you for sure. And it's funny too, because I always think like, like it's, you never expected any of this to like go as far as it has, you know, like all of us yeah. probably like, I mean, there's some that could say, Oh yeah, well, you know, the future was always headed this way for like, but I mean like us personally, individually, like, how did we, you know what I mean? Like, this is still happening. You know what I mean? Like right. I, I just, and I, and that's what keeps me grateful and <laughs> keeps me still like, happening. <laughs> that's what keeps me grateful and keeps me like persistent yeah. and like just trying to keep going because honestly, like, I'm just like, what, what the hell, you know, right. like I, I'm still here doing this thing that, and I, and I somehow man, managed to keep paying my bills and like doing all, I'm just like, okay, you know, just like throw yeah. my hands up and keep, keep having fun with yeah. it. Even I'm after so fortunate to be yeah. in this position, yeah, you know, and and you got to have fun with it. You can't let uh other people really bring you down and the communities drag you down with negativity or whatever the case may be, because there's always those uniques, those unique viewers who kind of come in from outside of the community and they try to, yeah. you know, dictate and say things about your content. And, you know, it, it'll be like a little drop of doubt that enter your, enters your mind if you pay attention to that stuff. So you got to stick to it. Yeah. Well, I now want to know what Mark. I want to ask Mark a question because I noticed that you started going into e-bikes per se. Did you get any like backlash because you had a very narrow tech scope? Also, I want to see if I can zoom. Oh, there we go. I was like, we need to be a little bit closer in. <laughs> the audience is listening. Tell me. Um, <laughs> yeah. And also Malik, if you need us to like say goodbye to you, we can. Yeah, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy I was able to jump in for a little bit with you guys. This is absolutely, a lot of fun. yeah. So, for where sure. can we find you? What you've been up to? I know you ha you're a founder of let's founder see, of New Meta New Meta Gaming Group or the New Meta Group for short. Uh, right now, we're building a lot of the brand on TikTok, but uh, pretty soon we'll be on pretty much all platforms from YouTube, Twitch. You'll see us at conventions, all that stuff. Uh, it's pretty much a, a rebirth of an old gaming venture that I had a long time ago called the Iron Star Movement. Some of the same people who were there for that, here for this, so super exciting. And yeah, uh, that link right there, crewham.com, Link Forte has all my social media links if you wanna find where, where I'm at. All the things. Well, before, you, okay, so thank you so much. And just for me personally, advice on how to get into short form content when you started out as a youtuber because it is so awkward for me to make a tiktok <laughs> i feel so old i'm like i really like doing this thing this thing oh, but yeah. like i don't know <laughs> i know that we have to like the youtube algorithm is like telling us a little bit how many people they're serving to us which they're not serving very many of our subscribers but as soon as we start making shorts they're all about us so like any I'll suggestions like how did you transition well once i learned with tiktok that they reward you for watch time uh and less is more uh oh. i started to really really rock rock and roll on there so uh okay. with gaming news you know i typically start with the headline might sensationalize it a little bit just to bring folks in but then i give them the facts i'll bring receipts in like for instance one of my uh biggest videos almost five million views i was talking about dying light and the fact that the game is 500 hours long um and you know that alone drew people in because they're like 500 hours and then i kind of explained like hey this is on their twitter you know and yeah. you know, these guys uh are talking about the trophies and achievements they're not talking about the story elaborated on it but it's a short video and it did very well because it was just all the information everybody needed and it was very quick so less is more always on TikTok, and make sure those first like two to three seconds are very compelling oh the, the you can now click baiting the beginning of the videos. Oh, I, will, I, will, I will say clickbait. Not, I mean, not, the first two seconds is the equivalent it's, it's, of a clickbait title. It's, it's now watch bait. It's watch bait. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's pretty much clickbait. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I wouldn't say be disingenuous to your audience. Yeah, though. fair enough. You don't want to be one enough. of those people. <laughs> well, see, and you could you could actually just get up and leave then if people have tuned out by now in the TikTok audience. If their their normal viewership is like ten seconds and then they're out. <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. to make a TikTok out of this. Out of this, of it, uh, if you make panel. a fifteen, if you make a fifteen-second video and they watch ten seconds of it, TikTok will reward you and push that video to more people's pages. So. Oh, 
Oh, very interesting. I was like, yeah. teach me, Obi-Wan. <laughs> very, always good to see you. It's a, a, see you in another 10 years. <laughs> uh, hopefully not. Hopefully not that long. It was good to see Maybe meeting everybody in also. Real time. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Take care, everybody. Bye. 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 Later. And then there were four. Okay, I know how to count. Oh, that that is the panel orientation I'm more used to. I, I did want to ask you, Mark, you're like bracing yourself, but you did try to do something different with your content. Like what happens when you do something different with their content? Like, and how do you react with it? And then I wanted to turn it to um, Dr. Bean about like the advice he gives, if that's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I, I've been doing it a long time and I, I've always kind of talked about different things in tech, uh, but there was a, a portion where I was very Apple focused and iPhone focused. I know. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you know, guys but... are both so, so <laughs> Apple focused and I'm like, hi, I talk about like Linux and anti Apple people yeah. all over the place. You guys are going to yeah. get over it. Yeah. But I, but I've always talked about other things, you know, projectors and stuff. Um, but yeah, the last few years, I've kind of leaned more towards that side of just focusing because I, I just can't keep talking about, you know, mostly about one subject anymore. So for the last four years, I've just been kind of, you know, just embracing talking about what I want to talk about. And I got into e-bikes recently and stuff. And yeah, of course, my audience so is cool. not all the way into it. So I'm not getting a lot of views and stuff, but I've already kind of braced myself for that. And um for me, the one type of thing that I look at in my YouTube analytics, the numbers really don't affect me, honestly, but I look at the the likes, like what percentage of people are liking the videos. And that percentage has gotten better over the past few years for me. Um, and so that means more hmm. to me over the views and stuff, because, yeah, a lot of people aren't watching them, but the people who are watching them, are they're there for it. you. Yeah, they're, 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 no, they're there for you, Mark. That's what it means. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's it's that, but it's also too like I I am I, I love making content now and and just searching for people searching for the, the topics and stuff are finding my channel. So it, it it's been different. I I'm but I'm an old dog, and this as I said before, like the numbers they matter, but not as much to me because I've seen people who have great numbers and they get burned off of YouTube, they get burned out, right? Getting millions of views, millions of subscribers, and they're like. I'm tired. And so the numbers I've learned doesn't doesn't override your happiness. So I focus on happiness and then everything else. And yeah, so just dealing with the audience is just when you're going through change, it's kind of like, you know, I, I've embraced this whole like I don't care what people say about me. I care why they said it. Um, and I started noticing I came back and a few years ago, my audio sucked. You know, my, my lighting was horrible. And people would say that. And if you just and sometimes people, they, they mean well, but they might just come off as, hey, man, your, your your lighting sucks. And it's not like they're trying to be mean, but they're actually telling the truth. So I looked at, OK, why are they saying that? You know, you know what? They're actually they're right. Um, and so I just kind of built up this armor over time. And um, I, I, I try to be careful at telling younger creators, oh, just you know, get tougher skin and stuff, because it's not that easy. Right. Like you have to kind of build it up over time. Yeah. But eventually and you have to learn how to just like. Let stuff bounce off of you. Take that positivity. Let it sink into your skin. Soak it all in. But the negative stuff, just let, just look at it, but let it bounce right off of you. Oh, I love that. That's great advice. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I definitely feel like, um, like Mark was saying, it's like there's only so much excitement I can get about the new Galaxy S57 or, you know what I mean? Like there's... We're, in, in my opinion, we've been plateaued as in, in that area of technology for years now. Um, and so I'm not racing to do like 12 videos in a row on this phone anymore because to be quite frank, it's just not that exciting. Um, it's exciting and like it's cool and like, you know, like there's a level of excitement around those things. But 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 doing that um that like kind of uh grind set to like just do every make it make an entire 20 minute video on just one button on the phone and do that on every single button the phone hat it's just not fun anymore <laughs> you know what i mean it, it's not fun and yeah, I i've noticed over the years that it is also damaging to just my happiness like i don't want to do these but um being like previously so focused on like you know what the uh literal and figurative payoff is of doing 12 videos on 12 different buttons on a phone 
um, is is more damaging to my happiness in the space in the long run. Yeah, the short gains are great. You know what I mean? Like super freaking awesome. And you get, you know, you get the notoriety, you get uh, circled in the news stuff and like, you know, like there's and there's all these like all this exposure and blah, blah, blah. But all that grinding and all that stuff coming at you over and over again for years you will smack your face into a wall whether you want to or not. And yeah, just doing stuff. And then you'll make technologically depressed. Yeah. Doing stuff that just makes (laughs) you happy. I feel like is, is better, you know, like I, I don't have to like, yeah, I I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm just now like within the last year or so coming into that frame of mind where like, you know what? I mean, at the end of the day, it might not be as financially beneficial for me to do things that are offbeat or not exactly what the entirety of my, um, you know, audience wants to see all the time, but I feel so much better. (laughs) You know what I mean? So much better. That has to matter. Um, Yeah, it didn't though for like, I mean, for literally for five years straight since I like start when I started youtube like as a job in 2013 for the next five years i did not stop i did not stop for a vacation i did not stop for a break i did not stop at all i was 80 hours a week all in every single day doing that and that that messes with you (laughs) yeah I agree with you. And I want to give um, Dr. Bean a chance to weigh in on this. I, I do want to just say, yes, I agree with you. And I I, I was there and I, it also got to the point, uh, my burnout got so bad that I actually, when I was playing um, games, I was feeling guilty because I wasn't working. So I was, as a creator, I think you end up in this tenuous balance of uh, you're always working. Yeah. Well, the, the internet never sleeps. And you're never not. Yeah, the internet never sleeps. You're no, always so you working, always feel like you're mode. letting yeah. somebody down if you're not constantly putting something out there. And I think the worst thing is that is that it ends up being myself most of the time that I feel like I'm letting down. What, what, what like everyone's have, talking, yeah. Nixie, what everyone's talking about is the value system. And so, like in in uh, business, we call what's our value ladder, right? That's that's the business term. But in creativity, is what do I value? You, do you value creative thr- uh, flow? Do you uh, value the, the quality time, your well-being? That's what we all ev- eventually have to come to is as a creator, as a YouTuber, as a mental health streamer, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're on 80 hours a week, I mean, you're burnt. And I'm surprised you didn't burn out faster. Uh, five <laughs> years is a long time, man. <laughs> I'm not going to oh, lie to you. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's that's long. But but everyone's talking about what is the value of it, uh, whether it's doing videos that I want to do or if it's something else in in a different a different manner. It's scheduling when only critical um, when it really needs to be there. So I have my time being able to make sure I have minimal calls and meetings focused on those connections that I really want to foster. The, the biggest thing I always have to tell everyone when they're streaming is saying no allows you to say yes to things you want to do because you can't say yes to everything and saying yes to everything is just a one-way street to just go and burn everything yourself out very very quickly we even do it in the mental health profession and during uh, the pandemic it's even gotten worse uh that we're we're on streaming like this pretty much one-on-one with a lot of our clients And there's not a lot of us time. We are sitting in a chair for eight hours a day when before we could go on walks with our clients, we could play basketball with them. We could do activities. We we can't do those things right now. And it it really hurts our profession uh, in a lot of ways. But if it hurts us in, in that capacity, what is it doing to the creators? Because then it puts that pressure on, I think, creators to be like, oh, cool. You know, you guys were going at 110% at this this point in time. Now COVID hits, everything's digital. You're now going to ramp that up to 180% because it's like, what's the new thing? What's how this? Let's get this taken care of. How can we in, entice our children to not be on TV, but also have TV, but not do this? And it's just like, there's so much mixed messaging out there. Yeah, I mean, and especially like you were saying, like everything drastically changed for a lot of us. Well, see, the thing is, it's like, 
it things did drastically change during like pandemic stuff um for a lot of us but i almost felt like i was like why well, i guess nothing really changes for me i just keep doing what i'm doing but now people are more reliant on me to put things because nobody's doing anything you know what i mean um and so that was kind of a weird like it was also a weird um like mind messing thing where the world is falling apart and i'm unaffected by it in a lot of ways yeah. And I get it that we've put in hours and weeks and years and yeah. months of work to get to this point to that for that to be OK. And I've, you know, come to terms with that. But for a minute there, it was like, yeah, like everything is crumbling and we're OK. We're, we're just doing what we were doing. And that's fine. It's such it, a it's, wonderful position it's hard. to be in, but you know, but it's hard to like challenging. think of that. You know what I mean? Because people are like losing jobs and dying and like and they well, have to go and they have to work and i i even found myself saying like well you know why don't people just stay home and then i was just thinking like how easy is it to just stay home and i'm like it's not i'm at a yeah. position where i can stay home i'm in an incredibly privileged position to stay home um and one of the things i want i wanted to take from your point um dr bean about um like the hustle, because what I was hearing is, you know, you were going out and you were, um, you know, enjoying being out with with some of the patients and things like that. Well, I was thinking of I've completely I've completely changed my perspective of how I create now. I've tried very hard to take um, this mindset that I used to have w with the hustle, and I've noticed a lot of younger generations have this this mindset, right? So it's. I got to take, I got to get, I got to, um, you know, grab these numbers. I have to, this, it's, it's a lot of like taking and it's just even the, the terminology around it is wrong. And instead I was thinking of like, you know, uh, what can we give? What can I give? What can my, um, content give to my audience in a way that it has never given before? Or what could I give to myself? And I think that even just changing that term terminology helped me change my mindset so much compared to the hustle. And then what Mark was saying about, you know, starting at that base foundational layer of happy, right? Is that kind of what you said, Mark? You, you like start from, okay, this makes me happy. And then all the rest is gravy. Yeah. Right? Like, and yeah, whatever one thing, happens, happens. Yeah. That was, was the one thing I learned is, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, views come and go. Sometimes it's your, under your control. Sometimes it's the the algorithm. It's the system, whatever. <laughs> but your happiness that you can control is is the most important thing. And for me, I made the decision a few years ago to know that I'm what I'm doing is I'm not following trends, and I might not get the most views, but I think I can make this work. And so now I'm making the videos that I'm happy about, going over bikes, projectors, and stuff, and I'm not doing everything that's trending. And on the flip side, I found other ways to to make money and to do brand partnerships and stuff. So now I'm not reliant on the views per se for my income. I'm doing these brand deals that is taking care of everything and I'm maximizing that. And if you go look at my average view for my videos, you might think, you know, oh, man, what, what is he? He's not he's, he can't. It's no way he's still YouTube uh, full time. I get that all the time. But I'm actually making more money than, you know, this is like the second biggest point of my entire career uh, as far as the amount of money I'm making. And. What that's done is freed me up to be able to just purely make the content that I want. And so, like I said before, I've been around for a long time. Like some of us, we've seen great creators come and go. And I think there's not enough focus on why that is. It's not always the money or the analytics. It is you go look at them, watch them and, and look at their faces and look at their expressions. And sometimes they, they're making views and getting views, but they're just not happy. And you'll yeah. see the, the inevitable why I'm leaving YouTube video. Like how yeah. many of our friends on YouTube have just tapped out? Yeah. yeah, I get it. There were there were people that when I started, I looked like when I actually started acknowledging YouTube, and I and I was like watching, like I started becoming a part of like the ecosystem, right? In the beginning, that, yeah, that I looked mm -hmm. up to. Um, that I was like, wow. Like that would be crazy to have a thousand subscribers. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that would be f so wild. And 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 then they just yeah they 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 were going hard 
on their content and this and that and like it got the best of them and they and they just disappeared sometimes they just you know one day they were gone never to be heard from again you know it's so weird. so what do you think about like the new so youtube basically made a formal statement of like daily content is king now you gotta do daily content and I, mean, I was just, they're basically, they're trying. So you have Instagram and Facebook are both competing with TikTok and YouTube is Google. So they're competing with TikTok. So what did, what were your first reactions? And like, did you, are you guys going to try or? I didn't know that was a thing. I don't pay attention to news or anything really. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's smart. It's, it's smart. Honestly, I, I don't pay attention to news. I it's... I really don't pay attention to social media much anymore. Um, I, I, I used to wake up every morning and I used to scroll through Twitter until the day before, you know, until I reached the day before. I used to scroll through Instagram and like and comment on everything. I used to go to YouTube uh, Creator app and reply to every comment from the last 24 hours or or try to or at least like them or whatever. I used to do all these things. And now I wake up and I like have a more nice morning and I get ready and I, you know, maybe like watch a show that I fell asleep on during the night before or whatever. Like I just like take it easy and like like i said before this may not be the best thing to have like the most money in my wallet but i will take the happiness over that like any day of the week especially being on the opposite end of it previously where not any amount of money in the world could save me <laughs> you know um, yeah, absolutely. I will take, I will, I, I don't know. I don't watch the news. I don't, I don't pay attention to, I just didn't even know that was a thing, but you know what? Um, I, I hate that. That was a thing that was said. <laughs> I, I don't like that. Well, I yeah, mean, it, it, Inst okay. Instagram's doing a different algorithm too, is what my marketing team is telling me is that Instagram wants you to do one post a day. Um, because that's, if you do more than one post a day, you, you're, you pretty, pretty much erase your previous posts from, from the algorithm. And if you don't have reels going on also a couple times a week, at least you aren't even tapping into that part of the algorithm. It, it's just a lot of these things are trying to force you to, to do a lot of this other content and it, it is sapping away at, at that, that happiness. And so I actually really like to hear what you just said <laughs> because that, that to me says balance. And that's what I can't, I can't do it. You know, there it is. There it is right there. It's, it's, you know, because YouTube has a fo focus on shorts, right? Shorts. And if people think, oh, it's just a minute long, I can crank out, you know, 10 of those, but <laughs> no, in reality, they, they, they can, that those can be a lot of work too, but yeah, an I, hour, I think, two like, hours, you can spend just as much time making a short as you could a regular video. Yeah. Cause yeah. Mm -hmm. Until you get your rhythm of it. Right. And, but I think everyone has their own pace, you know, you got to find, you got to keep your pace in content, you know, for some people, like for me, you know, it's not necessarily that burnout is always a bad thing, right? Like if you've ever been an athlete, I was in the army. Sometimes we used to, you know, do PT <laughs> until muscle failure, right? Until you can't move anymore. But you know that and you give yourself a couple of days to rest. And I think for me, what I've been able to do is that there are weeks where, you know, I have a bunch of brand opportunities. The money is good. And so I need to grind for four days straight, you know, working 15, 16, 17 hour days. But now I've, I, I know that after I do that, I need to give myself a couple of days off. Yeah. And as we, as we were talking about before, back in the day, it was, you know, <laughs> I hate to sound like old school. We didn't know anything about burnout and we were young no. and we could go for years of grinding, yeah. especially in tech. We didn't have the respect and yeah. the, 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 all that stuff. And there were great creators who just, you know, burned out. Right. And, 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 and then all of us, I, I, we've all gone through that burnout. So I think now it's like, it's okay to work hard, right? You want to be able to work hard, but give yourself that time to kind of to to pay to, to rest a little bit. So pacing yourself is 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 when you learn your pace and you learn your rhythm. That's when you can know when to turn it on and turn it off. And, and especially like Margo was saying, in tech, we really had to prove ourselves in the space back back then because we were inferior to just about any other single type of media coverage on the planet. Yeah. We were the trash oh, of the internet. So that's so valid to talk we were about. we were so trash on the internet I never thought nobody about cared that. about us remember? we weren't even allowed at ces 
I oh remember that. God. I I had to fight Getting with somebody. Yeah, yes. yeah I oh, literally yeah. was there. I think it was like Ty's iPhone. If somebody was there with me. I was like, well, you need a you know a byline. You need like yeah. a, a, a web page. I, yeah, a byline. I was like, I, know. I was like, my video I was has. There with you. You know what I, I used yeah. to oh, do back you? then? I was there. Yes, the last time you and I saw Mixie was the problem. I used to. I used to. I was there with you at CES, where we were like, oh wow. I used to edit yeah. my Google Analytics for my blog, just the PDF, and then resave it as a like I used to go to print the page and then edit it to add the numbers to make it look like my blog was super legit and send it to CES for credentials because that was the only and I was just completely flat out lying. I don't even care. It was stupid <laughs> cool. But do like, you remember when like the three years later they were like they started saying if you had X amount of following and they you started had a million subscribers, then they would let you like, in. That was the that was the first time they acknowledged YouTubers. You needed to have one million subscribers or a blog and a business card. And I was like, you had a blog and to, a business card, man. Like, you you have had the blog and a business card. Right? Yeah, no, it was. <laughs> it, but yeah, we had to fight so hard. And I think that also, you know, like we really wanted to do this. So it really also pushed us like, yes, work every single day, do only that, all that, all the time. And so that we could gain, we had to earn respect from the industry. Yes. Yeah, that's what kind of like, Oh, I'm just, I'm just really appreciative that you brought that up because now that I'm in a position that I'm in, I never really, I don't remember the time where it wasn't like that. And just looking back on it, it was, it was, it was, you know, it was television. You were either on TV or you were like a, what, a YouTuber? Is that what, like, what are you, what do yeah. you do on YouTube? There was, I mean, I, that? I remember there being like literal, yeah, like social media wars between like online publications and, and tech YouTube. Like they yeah. hated us when we started getting review units for shit. Excuse yes, me. absolutely. Uh, they <laughs> hated. They hated us. Like there was I so thought, much. Yeah. There was so much salt in the in the air, and, and now it's the opposite. Like I got. Now uh, it is completely. I, yeah, the Discovery Channel, and it, like I remember doing the hustle. I would I would write on Game GameSpot or GameStop or what GameSpot dot com, and I would write on Reddit, and I'd be like, "This girl's talking about stuff. It's kind of cool." Like I'm I'm impersonating <laughs> other people, and I'm like, "You guys should," you know. And I was like hustling so hard, and then just to get that recognition from Discovery Channel themselves, and they were like, "We want you on our network," and I'm like, "Ha ha, mother, you know, like mother frackers." I like we've legitimatized we, we've legitimatized the business but um yeah, yeah. We, we, i mean we, we, did that, we did that as a group right we did it as a group yeah. and it's and it's as at the point group, to where there, there still is some resentment towards us you know and there's still people I, I come across people all the time like oh what do you do oh you just sit at home all day you, oh and i i hear it all it's the time so and, easy. <laughs> yeah and it's just like and you know i have to be honest like i, I had a friend who used to always rag on me but then you know, the pandemic happened they had to work from home and they got fired while they were working at home and because they ragged on me for years, I wanted to say something about like, you know, like, oh, how is it working at home? You know what I'm saying? But I, I felt so bad. I was like, you know, I reached out and, you know, you tried to help him. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to be like, where... so I'm going to turn to camera and be like, so. No, <laughs> no I, 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 I wanted to. That's not, that's my maturity. Like, that's I'm, not I'm your a, style. Yeah, yeah, not anymore. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, you know, I look at younger creators where there's actually a good thing now that the word is out that you can make money. To, I think to, a lot yeah. of newer creators that get into it now and they're like, if they don't have a million subscribers in three years, they feel like they're failures. And it's, it's, and I've talked with you two behind the scenes about this, how it is great to highlight the Mr. Beast, the people who are making it. But the actuality is that you need to highlight those creators that are kind of the middle of the road who don't have millions of subscribers, but they still making a living off of it. How is their experience? And um, and so younger creators now are getting frustrated and as they're in high school now and able able to make money, sometimes more money than their parents. But I think about what is three years now down the road? Are they going to be burned out? And but they've dedicated this as their career instead of like some of us, we've we've worked full jobs and went to college before we even thought about YouTube. Right. So as I'm always concerned and interested to hear, you know, about what younger creators are going through, whether it's actually a good thing to know now that you can be successful because People think that path, yeah. they don't, that path is a lot easier than what it is. 
And to, to touch on what you said a little bit ago too, Mark, is uh, the whole work from home thing, right? I don't think that people really understood the type of mental gymnastics it takes to work from home by yourself under your own responsibility levels. And, and especially for like us where we're making videos like all day long, what do I do? I talk to myself quite literally. And then I listen to myself, talk back to myself <laughs> all day. That's all I do. And, and I have to continue to be responsible and like, you know, like, like stay on task and stuff like that. Like it's a lot. I, I've never had like a job where I was like, working from home like regularly you know what i mean like at a regular like normal job i've never had like that kind of work from home job but i can only imagine going from being in like a workplace environment to being in a cave by yourself at home for eight <laughs> hours a day and how much that would impact you because i know as that a, like and as as a child yeah with, and as a the child. barrier to entry now is not yeah. a thousand subscribers oh my god it's um but we can ask I want to let the doc tag yeah. tag in because it's like <laughs> we're well, this. This, this is, is all everything vibe. you guys are saying are is exactly what we we talk about in in therapy. It's boundaries, stability. You're not going to do this in a year. The, let, use Ninja as an ex, as an example. Does anyone know his historical uh, precedents? I mean, he was nothing, nothing until he just started getting some really good stuff. But then he even got burnt out. He was in commercials. He was in, he's a, a major Twitch. Oh, yeah, uh, still. everywhere. It's, it's, he's, he was everywhere. Do you see him in those commercials right now? No, he goes online and he talks about how he got burnt out because he's like, oh, here's this, here's that. And that's where I actually really liked uh, where Soldier know, Knows Best actually said, I know when to say no, I can do this. And yes, I have to crank these things out for four four days, but then I take a break. Then I need to go and do whatever I want to do. That works the same way. It's okay to go and do those four cents as long as you have a break somewhere. But there's also that that fear of like, oh, if I stop, am I going to lose subscribers? Probably. Yeah. Does it matter? <laughs> no, because well, you'll make them back up in, in, in better yeah. content. When you're going, you're <laughs> going though. And, and it took some of us time to figure that out. You know, it's like, I would never say no to anything. I would travel twice <laughs> a month all year long and go to anything that anybody ever asked of me. And then, yeah, you you hit a you hit a wall. It's just gonna happen. Absolutely, yeah. I, we, I had to. Ask... we had to. We had to. Oh yeah, yeah we we had really to. did have to. We we yeah. in it our was, a? <laughs> if we hadn't, we wouldn't have earned that respect that I was talking about from the industry. Yeah, you know, we wouldn't, like, wouldn't be able to make it easier for you know. And I hate I hate trying to say this like oh you know we but we we helped yeah. set the foundation of the house of YouTube tech. And yeah, now yeah. we see you don't all you don't see the foundation of any house, right? But you know it's important to keep everything else that you build on top successful. And you like you said, we we had to do those things, but now the companies understand, and now they send you know review units or online. Like it's uh, it's, it's been a journey, but we, we made it, and I think this younger generations can can benefit. I mean, from it, but, but it's also, still, it's work. I and I wish I had paid attention to this more back when I was doing it. But like the thought that I've been all over the world spending time with people that I call my friends now. I wish I would have been in those little moments longer, right? Presence. Presence. That's, That's what yeah. we're talking about. Exactly. Because we were always all together hanging out every like literally everywhere and doing all these crazy stupid things that I would have never imagined somebody would have paid me to do in my life. <laughs> but we weren't all present we were all grind set grind set work 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 you know but we were having fun and joking but i, I can't give you like I, I have very few moments that i'm like oh i i remember this specific moment it was so great like we did this thing and whatever everything else is a blur right yeah and it, it's also you weren't i guess i i equate it to being young also because i feel like or at least back then being immature and not necessarily being young right and it's also not operating from a deep sense of worthiness. I just had this achievement based model that I just don't have anymore. Yeah. Um, you unlocking achievements, the little unlocking you know, achievements uh, of like going up the ladder. Um, but Dr. Bean, I did want you to kind of break down. Cause I don't know if these guys know about geek therapy. I think this yeah. would be really a good time. <laughs> so, so it also one of the thing I want to talk uh, just quickly sure. touch about is what you guys are talking about is resilience and grit and perseverance to be able to do that things. Resilience is earned. It is not given. Anyone who says, "Oh, my resilience has been given to me," is talking full of. I'm sorry, I'm swearing. <laughs> 
but it's true. <laughs> Resilience is earned in this world. It is not that something one. that is just given to you. You have to go through the trials. You have to go through the tribulations. You have to continue forward. That's where that perseverance comes in. That's what creates grit. That's what keeps us going forward. We should um, take a moment and give give all yeah. the creators that are putting Huge. the work in a, a round of applause, applause for resilience. That's yes. It that is a great a word. I can't, I don't think I can spell it. It's that in Renaissance. I don't, I just, <laughs> it's, 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 it's re and then silence. Right? Yeah. There we go. yeah. That's, that's, and with an Fair. illance or something in there. <laughs> yeah. um, well, we, what we do at Geek Therapeutics is we take pretty much anything that's geek culture, um, whether it's it's tech, whether it's video games, anime, RPGs, D&D, you name it. We talk about it in therapy and we work with gamers. We work with voice actors like I. I do a lot. And you know, everyone that goes to the convention is like, probably someone you've met at a con is probably has met me in some some capacity or <laughs> one of my team members on on some capacity we we pretty much are are the the go-to place for for training on a lot of continuing education credits um, for therapists and other professionals around the world that, that come in and take our stuff we're apa nbcc ace and a association of play therapy all accredited so they've looked basically they've looked at our content they say this meets our standards of being high quality informative and post licensure type stuff this year, we're actually going to venture into um, see, starting to see clients underneath uh, the key therapeutics as well, taking insurance and everything, because we are aiming to to get into these uh, hard to reach places. Um, I'm in Texas. I'm full blown liberal and I'm in Texas. And so I can tell you right now, like trying to hit some of these rural communities and, and reaching some of these people that don't have access to great mental health care is one of our biggest passions. And that is aiming hands down what we're aiming to do with this is if I can get on a panel and save this kid's life that's over in this county that no one has any therapeutic services in, and we can bring them from start to finish into becoming who they are really meant to be, that's our goal. Then we've saved one person. And that to me, that's, that's really what we, this is all about. And, and seeing your, um, seeing your streamer packet actually on your website, can you talk a little bit about that? Cause I was just like that, that's so serendipitous to, you know, to what we're talking about here, uh, about, yeah. I don't know if we have time to, to screen share, but, um, it would be interesting to talk about, um, I can briefly that. kind of, kind of talk about it. Um, it, yeah. it's basically about a four hour uh, course that kind of goes over uh, mental health and what burnout is. How do we understand it from start to finish? How do we come back from burnout? But it also goes over as, as course creators of, of being able to, to know who is, is coming in and what your expectations are and and how you can handle yourself coming forward in going through this so as whether you're a mod whether you are a uh, talking about parasocial relationships all of those things type uh, matter and you should know about them so like when we talked about parasocial relationships when we talked about mind um, blown yeah th th that's <laughs> all in, in the burnout i was really excited that i knew about boundaries i wore my shirt i don't have my ducks in a row i have squirrels and they're everywhere um <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't know anything about that. Even just trying to understand what burnout is. Could you explain really quickly? Because I know um, we need to wrap up soon. And I wanted to give everyone the opportunity to say where they can find us. Um, yeah, burnout. Like, yeah. So <laughs> let's so go from the back to the forward, talk about burnout at the so, end. <laughs> so, so burnout is, is basically when you have been stressed out for so long, you've reached your capacity. It's over. It, you, you, it's, it's, you're past the limits of what you can, you can do. Your emotions are blunted. You're having physical stress reactions. There's behavioral signs, there's psychological ones, such as you're isolating yourself from others. You're withdrawing from responsibilities, AKA creating content. You feel helpless, trapped. You have no joy in any sort of like you've reached burnout that's you've you're past the stress so what we've kind of been talking about is feeling our audience wanting something more of us right like okay that's stress that's us feeling like what's the next video what's that but when we're like i can't do this anymore i don't know why i'm making this video i don't like this i don't want to mm -hmm. do this <laughs> we've had burnout and that's that's the difference between them so stress comes first then it goes burnout yeah, yeah, I, I I've, really I've appreciate you. I, I was just going to say, I, I really appreciate your ability to take all of the creators' stories and being able to distill it into an explanation like that. Um, 
Sorry, I, I just wanted to say, Dom, I know you're limited on time, but if you wanted to talk about your story of burnout and where we can find you on, I watched um, and listened to Technologically Depressed. I loved it. Um, I'd love to hear more about it. Um, so I think that my biggest wall came um, sometime, what, like, sometime like a almost like a year and a half ago or something. I don't know. I just, I just disappeared from uploading for like four or five months. I just didn't, I didn't do anything. I literally did nothing. Um, and not cause I didn't want to do anything, but I couldn't like, I just mm -hmm. could not do anything. And, um, and yeah, I just kind of disappeared from, from the internet, you know, for, for a minute of time. And I mean, I feel really good about it now that I did that. <laughs> like at the time it wasn't a great I wasn't feeling great about the fact that I couldn't do it and each day was like even more stressful and anxious than Guilt. the one before it yeah. because I knew I didn't upload anything and I also knew that the next day I wasn't going to upload something because I didn't make something today to put up the next day so how could I put something up the next day that I didn't create today there was no way I was going to create something the same day and put it up because that would just be too stupid because it'd be too late in the day for me to upload a video like there's it, just like all these things that just dogpile on top of each other. My squirrels were all over the place, you know? And uh, so, yeah. So there was like that, that point in time. And I am like, I'm really happy that that happened almost. <laughs> like, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, it would have perspective. Well, that, and it would have, it would have, it was inevitable, right? Like it was inevitable. And, um, I think it happened at a good time to where I, it could have happened. It could have happened. It could have been worse. And I, I would have, maybe I would have just disappeared altogether and not ever came back to doing what I was doing or, or this and that, you know, I, remember I was saying earlier where I, I, I was going for like five years straight, go, 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 go traveling every month, like uh, up making as many pieces of content as I could like this and that. Um, you know what my solution to that was, right? My solution to that at the end of those five years, or not, I mean, not that there was like a hard stopping point or whatever, but at, at, at the tail end of that amount of time, I was like, wow, I'm doing way too much on all this tech stuff. What do I do? I started another channel. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> Just take the pressure off. I started another channel, yes, to to serve my creative outlets in another place and um, feel like I didn't owe all of my time to tech YouTube. But then what what just happened? What happened with that? And then I just started feeling like I owed all of my time to two channels eventually because that channel grew pretty quickly because I'd already learned how to grow a YouTube channel pretty successfully. You know, like I, I know how the thing works. So I know like what you have to do to kind of get served by YouTube to people like early on because YouTube loves fresh new channels that are actively <laughs> uploading. They love it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> because they get to serve you ads and they get to keep 100 percent of that ad money at the at the oh, beginning you know what i mean interesting i mean that's what i've the see, this this is the sad part too what i've learned about like newer youtube channels is that if you're trying to make a successful youtube channel what do you what should you do think about what makes google the most money and <laughs> you will be successful on the platform straight up I a mean, act out of the interests of google and you will just grow if, <laughs> if you act like you are fully invested in their stock and you have a a freaking chair at the board you will be successful and and that's a sad way to think about it I, that's not a healthy way to think about it by any means but well, yeah so i just started putting a lot of time into both of those things and then that was just not a good thing also because but it in my head i rationalized and i was like okay well this is nice now i have two things going on you know blah 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 and um and so i kept doing that for like another like three years you know what i mean until i hit that point that i was just talking about where i kind of just disappeared um and so yeah and and i you know i got got our, our, everything kind of figured out a little better and i'm in a better place with with everything now where i'm doing a lot more things that revolve around my happiness instead of everyone else's 
which is great. You know, like it's always nice to be selfless and worried about everybody else's happiness and making sure everything is okay. But you know what? I feel like I would put a lot of selflessness out there in the world, making free content for a decade. And now it's time to make me happy. And so that's what I do. And yeah, I started this podcast uh, like a month ago or something where I just talk about like uh, most honestly, most of the time it's when I'm having a crappy existence point, you know, but um, I don't think that's a bad thing too, because like we tend to forget about um, the lessons we learned going through crappy points by not talking about them, right? By not celebrating how terrible a day was. Um, we tend to just take that for granted and we're just like, okay, well, it's a better day now. But no, but what did I learn from that situation I was in? Um, you don't ever really like think so just me and, and it's just literally just a podcast where I just talk to myself or whatever. I just ramble about what's happening um, to have that. Even if I don't go listen back to it, which I don't, I don't even edit it. I literally, there's no music. There's no nothing. I just start, stop, clip the ends, upload. I don't care to listen yeah. back to it. I don't care to listen back to it, but I can if I want to, but, but recording it and putting it out there, like it's just a really raw and genuine way for for me to speak about the bad things that are happening or the things that I'm going through. And also that can, can and has been helping other people. So I, I like that form of, you know, it's my own little form of like, uh, like uh, it's my own little like therapeutic ritual now that I will do when I just need to do something like that. And I don't even put it out every week. Like, honestly, it's been like two weeks since I put up an episode of that, but it's just because it's just like, I just do it when I, when I feel like it, when I want to, I don't feel like I have to serve anybody by doing this. I do it when I want to. And when I feel like it's the right time for me, because, yeah. you know, um, yeah, screw everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really good point that you said on the podcast though, where you, um, talk about celebrating your good and your bad days. And I thought about that and I was thinking, you know, celebrating your bad days because you know how they talk about teaching moments. And I used to be like, Oh God, like screw these people. I, <laughs> but you do learn something from it. So like, what's the worst that's going to happen if you create content that isn't ideal, but it's, it's really serving your authentic self. Okay. So it's not ideal for your channel, but you're putting it out there. Like you're, you're going to be happy about it. So, yeah. you know, just, and, just and you know what, I absolutely love, uh, a lot of the internet today um, is really helpful to that because I know that nobody's going to talk to me about talking about my mental health anymore. <laughs> there used to yeah, be a time fair. where people would do that, but now if you do that, the internet will know where your job is, how many family members you have, what you do for a living, you know, the time you go to the grocery store every week, you know, and they will ruin your life. So I'm glad that we have the internet that the, the social justice internet to hold people accountable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have way more accountability now than we used to. And it, and it allows people to not be in fear of saying what they really feel. Yeah. Does Mark have any sneaky hidden channels that are a hundred percent passion project that you're willing to divulge? <laughs> no, no, I, no, I, I just focus on one channel. I have ideas for, for, for future channels, but yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a, you know, YouTube being in a creator is a journey. And I think that, you know, some of the focus that you see younger creators now chasing the views, you know, and there's nothing wrong with doing what's trending, trying to get a lot of views. But, um, you know, I, I would, I would say that focus on your, your happiness and the truth is brand deals, brand relationships with marketing companies, especially with tech is incredibly important. Um, and, but I, I think a lot of younger creators, they fall into the, well, I need to get a lot of views to, to, to get, and it's just, that comes and goes and, um, it's a roller coaster. Be, 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 yeah. And be I careful believe... about getting into trends about, okay, if you think about getting into tech, everyone talks, iPhone, Apple, Sam, we, we all talk to the top five. And if you truly want to talk about those things, go for it, but don't do it just because it's popular right. because it's a very crowded space. Yeah. And that's why I've gotten to e-bikes. But personally, I am interested in e-bikes, but also that that's a very uncharted space for the most part. There's, there's some great creators doing it, but I, I saw that as an opportunity and I'm, I'm already, you know, the, the brand deals that I have with that is 
I, look, I, I talk with a lot of creators behind the scenes and I'm like, I, I do videos that don't always get a lot of views, but I do know in some cases where I'm still making more money than those people. And we've been talking and sharing con and I'm just like, look, it's, it's the relationships. It's that grind is meeting those people. It's not always just about the views. It's a lot of brands honestly would take quality content in the way that they're looking for it over someone that maybe gets a lot of views, but the, the conversion rate might not be the best. So it's, it's, so many different things, but I, I would I would kind of sum up my entire experience of um, if if you know when you hit upload, you're happy with that video. The views can't determine whether or not it's a great video. It's you know when you hit yeah. that upload button that is that is a great video. And once that, if the views come, hey, that's a bonus. If they don't, pay attention to the comments, pay, pay attention to the people that are, that have watched it, and just think about you know maybe some things you can change. But um, you can be very successful on YouTube and not get a bunch of views and you can still make a very good living but keep yourself happy and think about this too i would rather have one close friend than 10 people that know me and you get that as a creator in the creator family there's some people who just want to hang with you and, and collab with you but there's people you can tell that really care about you and i honestly my favorite creators, I don't know how many subscribers they got. I honestly don't. I don't care. Like, I watch their content. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how many views I, they get. I don't care how many likes. I watch it because I want to watch it. And so when you are dealing with other creators, you might find that, you know, there's some who are just looking at your numbers and your success. But if that goes, you know, who's really there for you? Who's really asking about you when you go to these events? I honestly, I hate talking tech at these events. I want to talk about what you're doing. I want to talk sports. I want to talk other things and get to know you. And, and, and I think that's I'll a play D&D, man. Let's do yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to give you the opportunity to actually to talk about D&D &D because I wanted to ex kind of expand on Mark's point is that there's one thing that I didn't realize that is absolutely instrumental in this game. And that is you are alone physically, but you literally cannot do this alone. A and you are not, and you're not alone. There, everybody else is on the same kind of path, the same trajectory. Make a a super RPG party, you know, like Mark said, recruit people who really light you up, who who give you that energy and that excitement for what you're doing and hang around them all the time. You know, I saw a collab that you did recently, Mark, and that's like exactly it was just I just enjoyed it. Like just think about the moments where you feel like you're in and actually enjoying the conversation and then just try to perpetuate it and perpetuate it and just, um, you know, focus on that, what you can give to yourself and what you can give to the community instead of what you can take and the numbers you can get. Thanks guys so much. And thank you for being a part of Geek Beacon Fest and helping out the Able Gamers charity. Like I, I so appreciate you. I'm so happy that we were able to connect. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for everything.